Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,928. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with a very special guest by the name of Rita Case. Rita, welcome to Cars Yeah! Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I am so excited to rev it up, and I'm ready to go. You are always ready to go. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing most people don't know about you, Rita? (laughs) <laughs> One little thing. I'm sure there's a lot of things, but uh, I would guess that most people don't know that I was the first person to sell a Honda car in the United States when they came in 1970. What? No way. Serious? Yep, a serious. Uh, my dad was the first Honda dealer in the United States, so he got the first delivered cars in California. Wow. And uh, nobody could sell those little pregnant roller skates. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up uh, being the one sitting in the little room next door to the motorcycle store because all the Honda cars were given to motorcycle dealers at the time. That was their only distribution. So there was a little sign on our motorcycle store, our big motorcycle store, that said, if you're interested in a Honda car, go next door. This little bitty looked like an outhouse. I was over there. And uh, <laughs> so I was the first Honda car saleswoman back in 1970. You know, that's incredible. I remember as a kid having a a paper route and seeing a new one of those tiny little things in a driveway early one morning. I lived in Southern California and I rolled up and I, what is this thing? It was so tiny. It was so (laughs) tiny. Well, I didn't know that. See, that's why I asked that question. That is a pretty cool, there's a trivia question for you listeners out there. Who was the first person (laughs) to sell a Honda? Well, let me give you a proper introduction here. We're going to dive into a very exciting thing that has happened to you recently. Rita Case is the president. President, CEO, and owner of the Rick Case Automotive Group, the nation's largest retail auto group owned and operated by a woman. The 14 dealerships produce over $1 billion, with a B, in annual sales. Rita is a new member of the very prestigious 2022 Horatio Alger Award, and she's the only woman in the automotive retail business in their 75-year history to become the Horatio Alger honoree. Wow. Congratulations. Rita has received numerous other national awards and local awards in recognition for her contributions over the past 30 plus years. Rita and her late husband, Rick, are known for developing and leading events for nonprofit groups, which to date have raised over $100 million for many of these groups. And by the way, as if that's not enough, Rita also pilots her own jet. We'll be back in just a minute, but first a word from our valued sponsor. So give them a little love and we'll be back with Rita Case. Hang on. Covercraft's newest five-layer indoor cover is especially engineered for indoor use, providing maximum dust protection when your vehicle is stored in the garage. Your five-layer indoor cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form, and fit with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. Even if your vehicle is always inside, dust and fallout can damage the paint, and an extra layer of soft, breathable material protects from accidental bumps and rubs. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft too. Every one of my vehicles is protected with a Covercraft cover, custom fit to fit the car like a glove. And I have a deal for you. If you use the code ya 21 at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your order plus free shipping. That's right. 10% off and free shipping. Simply use the code YEAH, Y-E-A-H-2-1 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I was tired of my rates for my collector car insurance going up every year for no explainable reason. My carrier seemed to be turning into a media company versus an insurance company. And I realized that a portion of my policy premium was paying for all those so-called free media goodies. So I did my homework. I talked to knowledgeable collectors, shopped around and discovered American Collectors Insurance. They've been serving the collector car hobby since 1976. You last that long by properly serving your customers insurance need, not with a lot of fluff. ACI is ranked the number one 
online collector car insurance provider, according to Google, Trustpilot, Facebook, and they offer their real person guarantee live support. No never ending phone loops when you need help. Plus, because you don't use your classic car as a daily driver, you could save up to 40% compared to regular auto insurance. American Collectors Insurance provides agreed value policies. So if you experience a total loss to your collector vehicle or it's stolen, you'll be paid the amount listed on your declaration page, less any deductibles, of course. No ifs, ands, or buts. Give them a call today and ask for your free quote at 866-A-C-I-Y-E-A-H. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Greens, at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. So, Rita, we are back. I got to start with this uh, incredible honor that you've been bestowed. And I want to give the listeners a quick little deal. The association uh, annually bestows the Horatio Alger Award on outstanding Americans who exemplify dedication, purpose, and perseverance in their personal and professional lives. Recipients often achieve success in the face of adversity, and each award recipient becomes a lifetime member of the association. Before we talk about your life in the automotive business, what does this award mean for you? It is such an honor. You know, it, that is true. It is such an honor. Out of the 779 honorees over 75 year history, there's only been 64 women that have received this award. So I have always tried to break the ceiling for women and pave the way for women to accomplish unique and um, honored achievements. So I'm excited about getting this award and I'm mostly excited because the award stands for education. The reason that the Horatio Alger members are gather and, and, and um, you know, support this uh, membership. It's a, an association. You become a lifetime member of an association. And what the association's purpose is, is providing scholarship to children that would not have the opportunity for those funds, but that deserve the right for those funds mm. to have a higher education. It's only for higher education, not just um, for your universities, but also vocational education. So I totally believe that education is the greatest gift that you can give someone at any age. Once it's given, it can never be taken away. And education is truly opens the doors of opportunity. It's the most successful tool that you can have in your toolbox to meet your passion and achieve your goals. Absolutely. And later in our talk today, we're going to talk about the incredible things that you and, and your husband have done for people and for education. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. And But but I have to ask you this, because this is a neat little tie-in. We had a great pre-show chat, Rita and I, and I asked her about her hats. Because if you know Rita, or if you've ever seen a picture of Rita, or ever seen Rita at, say, the Boca Raton Concours, or any of the many events or dealerships, she's always got a beautiful hat on her head. And I said, Rita, what's with the hats? What's the story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, people ask me about my hats all the time because I uh, I always wear a hat. I wear either a business hat for my business work or a, you know a party hat if it's a party. But uh, 40 years ago, when I married Rick and I moved from Santa Rosa, California, which is I was the dealer's daughter there, running my dad's dealership after many years of scratching my reputation from the dealer's daughter to being the dealer. Yes. So um, running my dad's dealership there for a few years, I met Rick Case, a car dealer from Akron, Ohio, Honda car and motorcycle dealer. And, and you know, love, love got us together. And I ended <laughs> yeah. up leaving the sunniest place in the United States, Santa Rosa, Napa Valley, California, and moving to the least sunniest place in the United States, Akron, Ohio, and um, starting all over again as the dealer's wife. It was a little bit more difficult. I didn't realize it, but being the dealer's daughter was a little bit more easy to um, gain my reputation and my respect in the auto industry than being the dealer's wife. Right. So I decided when we got married and I moved to Akron, Ohio, and now I was five steps behind Rick Case, the dealer, mm -hmm. and I was the new wife. I said, I got to do something different. I have got to get a name for myself. I have to do something that makes me stand out so that I will be heard, I will be respected, and I'll have a chance to make uh, to make my way again as a very successful female car dealer. So I started to wear hats back in 1980, and uh, it became uh, it became my my brand. 
Mm-hmm. My hat is definitely my brand, and people can spot me in a room of 500 people at a charity event and say, oh, there's Rita Case, because I'll be the only one with a hat. Yep. I get compliments all the time from men and women. Wow, that hat looks great. Boy, I wish I could wear a hat. I'm like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing's holding you back. Yeah. You, well, it was a brilliant move. And you mentioned to me in our pre-show chat that you have to stand out in today's world in some way, find some little way, some little action uh, item. And the hat definitely worked for you. I mean, it's your trademark, if you will. And I was talking about you with my mom early this morning. She was asking, who's going to be on your show today? She listens to my show. So shout out to mom. And I said, oh, you got to Google this lady's name and check out all her beautiful hats. And she just, she (laughs) she fell in love with you. So I think it's fantastic. When you think about your career, In the automotive industry, and when Rita called in today, I said, how are you? And there's this incredible positivity. Now, the car business is tough, and you've been through it all. And what we're going through right now with supply chain issues and cars not being available, but you just have this wonderful outlook on it. So I have to ask you, what is your favorite thing about this incredibly difficult career that you've chosen? Because it's not easy (laughs) selling cars. It may You may think it is, but it's not. Well, you know, I'm a very positive person. I'm always looking for the positive in everything. Mm -hmm. And I see the car business as the best product in the world to sell. No matter whether you're six years old, you're playing with cars, or you're, you know, 80 years old, you're talking about cars, or you're waiting for the Indianapolis 500 race or the Formula One race. Every Everybody, man or woman, child or older adult, Mm -hmm. loves to talk about cars. So I'm a people person. That's another thing about me. I love to be with people. I enjoy everything about being with all kinds of people. And this business is a people business. So I look at the car business as far as I know you say it's tough and it's competitive, but I've always seen the car business as a retail dealer as a game. Mm -hmm. I'm playing a game. How do I win against my fellow dealer with the same brand? Or how do I win against the fellow dealer in a different brand? You know, how do I become the number one volume dealer? Or how do I introduce a product that's never been sold in the United States before? Which is pretty much how we built our business. Mm -hmm. We introduced every new brand brought to the United States since 1980. Oh my gosh. And some of them have our losers like Daewoo was a loser, but most of them were winners. Mm -hmm. So we introduced the first Acura dealership, the first Isuzu dealership, the first Hyundai dealership. Wow. I could go on. We became a master at introducing never been sold products, uh, cars, brands in the United States. And that's how we grew our business. We didn't buy dealerships. We were startup. But uh, I love this business because everyone likes to talk cars. Everyone needs a car. They're not going to go away in my lifetime or my children's lifetime, I don't believe. It's going to continue to be the transportation that provides Americans with freedom. So I'm a positive person and it's a great product and I love people. So that's why I enjoy the business. Yeah, it's amazing. I didn't know that about because when I had Rick on the show, we talked mostly about a Concours event, the Boca Raton Concours, which you guys have been. In fact, you guys created that Concours. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we founded it. We wanted to beat Pebble Beach. That was our goal. (laughs) And we have raised more money than Pebble Beach. We're still not at the level of, uh, you know, of reputation of Pebble Beach, but we certainly have raised more money for charity than Pebble Beach. Wow. I mean, another amazing thing. And we're going to get into this charity thing, but I want to talk about what I call driving inspirations. A key mentor in your life, you are a, a fabulous mentor to so many people, but who was a key mentor, most influential person in your life? Well, when it comes to my youth, before I met Rick, it was my mother. My mother was a, a very similar to Rick and myself. She was in the operations. She was uh, basically the COO of their dealership. And my dad was the CEO and they worked together. They founded the business together. They worked together every single day. My mother's still alive. She's 88 years old and she still goes to the dealership every day. Manly Honda Santa Rosa. Wow. The first Honda dealership in the United States to open. So she still goes in and opens the mail. She's got, you know, jobs. So my mother was my mentor. She was my head cheerleader. When I said, mom, I want to be the car dealer, even though I had two brothers and my dad was kind of expecting my brothers to be 
be more the dealer Mm -hmm. in the beginning. My mom says, no, you you can do it if this is what you want to do. And so she was my head cheerleader. She really, she was a pilot. She raced motorcycles. She was the first woman to race um, Honda road racing motorcycles in 1962 when Honda came to the United States with their road racing bike. So I have a history with my mother being an exception um, in and breaking the ceiling for women in different fields. So I was able to follow that. And so my mother, and then when I met Rick, He was definitely my business mentor. I came from a single point town, Santa Rosa, to Akron, Cleveland, Ohio, which was a much bigger market, multiple dealers. So I really learned how to compete in a multiple dealer market and in a much higher volume arena. And so I I would have to say definitely Rick mentored me in my current successful skills and uh, and my level of making decisions today to continue to run the business in the CEO's position. Oh, I love it. You know, with your enthusiasm, this next question is great. And that is, how would you advise somebody who wants to get into the business, the car dealer business? Well, you got to have a great positive attitude because this is a people business. Mm -hmm. Every position in the car business, whether you're a salesman or you're a service advisor, a counterparts person, even our title people have to have great attitudes because there are challenges every day. And so I would say first, you have to really love people and you have to see that the glass is always half full and have a have a positive outlook and be happy with that. It's this is an easy business. You don't have to have any training. We train on the job. Mm. So love cars, love people, have a positive attitude, be willing to be flexible with your work schedule, and you will be amazed at how much fun this business is and what kind of fortune that you can create for yourself. Ah, uh, well, where do I sign up? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll send you an application. <laughs> all right, all right, we got a deal. Now, I'd be remiss not to ask this next question, and that is what's going on in the market now. When we were chatting earlier this morning, you talked about, I've lived through it all. So, And I said, well, wow, did you ever think we'd go through what has happened with COVID and then the supply chain issues that are affecting so many aspects of everything? But the car business, since we're talking cars today, is greatly affected by this. Do you have any kind of crystal ball uh, in your repertoire of other than your positivity, which goes a million miles of (laughs) where you see us being able to come out of this? Yeah, no, it is really, really tough to look too far out on the new car, a delivery issue, because uh, there is not much information as to the recovery of the certain chip that the cars use in relationship to the chip that the phones and computers use, which seems to be a chip that's manufactured in higher volume because it's a higher profit item. So, you know, we have to make some chip factories that are going to support the chip that automobiles, all automobiles use. So it's really hard to tell what the next six months is going to be, but it would be my guess that, uh, or my educated guess, that we will be in the same situation in six months and even out to a year uh, where we will be in a um, position where we won't have our lot with 60 days supply like we're all used to having. I don't think that we're going to be out of cars. We aren't out of cars. We are pretty much pre-sold of cars, but we will continue to limp along. The manufacturers assure us that we'll be able to limp along, but it'll be down, you know, 30 to 40 percent. I mean, right now, the SARS, they're saying, is only 12 million. We haven't had 10 to 12 million since 2008 when we had the big previous meltdown. But that that is not because of demand like it was in 2008 and 9 it's because of supply so cars that are are made today are much more reliable than they were 15 years ago so people really don't need to replace their car uh, so i think that people are going to hold off for a while yeah. so that they aren't paying a premium and um we're just going to limp along with the new cars the used cars obviously they're becoming a shorter inventory availability because there's less new cars being traded in the Uh, Rental cars are buying used cars for their fleets because the manufacturers aren't selling the rental car companies new cars. They need to supply them to their dealers to get them out to customers. So it's a domino. It's a big circle. (laughs) It's a big domino effect. And parts has been a problem too. We have had certain issues with certain parts. I do think though, within the next six months, we're going to get the parts issues solved once we can get the supply chain and the delivery systems back on track. Mm -hmm. But new cars, I think we're going to be a while. There's going to be a pin-up demand for quite a while yeah, for yeah, new cars. I think so. Now, you have 
14 different dealerships. Is that number right? Yes, we're a nine in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Broward County, and uh, five in Atlanta. Are there any marks that seem to be a little less affected by this, or is it across the board? No, um, actually, uh, we've we've seen that the Hyundai a brand has been able to be a little bit more, have a little bit more supply than the other brands that we sell. Um, Alfa Romeo is another brand that we've been able to have some inventory on the ground as well. So um, I think that, uh, you know, Hyundai, Hyundai never canceled their inventories back in March of 2000. Uh, 20 mm. when the pandemic hit they they went full steam ahead they kept their chip order bank full they didn't cancel any chips and things Smart move. so they kind of had a good head start they're also a huge company uh with massive amount of resources mm -hmm. so they're on the process now of building their own chip factory uh, so that they aren't smarter. <laughs> uh, so that they aren't yeah so that they aren't at the mercy of what chips the chip manufacturers want to produce a chip for a computer or a chip for a car. <laughs> yeah. 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 Incredible. So, well, um, I appreciate that insight. Uh, it gives us all a little bit of uh, uh, a vision of what's happening. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like we're in for a little bit of a haul here. So uh, yeah, sit on your car or if you, if you can do without it, maybe now's a good time to sell it because values are up. So there you go. Supply and demand. It always works that way. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. So uh, keep your hat on. <laughs> we're coming right back with the amazing <laughs> okay. Rita case. All right. I've discovered linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, Smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions. Ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS yeah when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. Here at Cars Yeah, it's all about inspiration. And our charity of choice is Tech Force Foundation, where it's all about making a positive difference in young people's lives. Tech Force helps young adults discover their talents and passions for all things automotive, with a mission of helping students develop a career as a professional technician. Tech Force awards nearly $2 million in scholarships every year for students to pursue technical education and they support hands-on activities, events, and mentorships across the country, working to change the outdated perceptions of these careers. Auto techs are in high demand, but the supply of qualified technicians is critically short. They need your help to fuel their mission. Learn more and join me in supporting them at techforce.org. So let's talk about a big challenge. We just talked about one there, but I always ask my guests about a huge challenge they faced, maybe even a failure. Whatever it was isn't the big factor here. It's more about how you dealt with it. And I love your positivity. So I think you look at, at these challenges as a challenge and a learning opportunity and how you overcame that situation. So take us on perhaps a little bumpy road, would you? Okay, sure. Well, uh, back in 19, when, when Hyundai first came to the United States back in 1985, we jumped up and we said, we'll take that franchise. We're going to be great at opening a brand new store. If you can remember, that was the first Korean car sold in America. Yeah. And most Americans back in 85, 86 only thought of Korea as the Korean War. There wasn't a lot of products brought to the United States that were Korean made. Right. Like China is a different story. Everybody, you know, has heard of things from China or from Japan. But Korea Korea was different. So in, eight, in 1985, we jumped up and we said, we'll build, we'll build a couple of brand new Hyundai stores and we're going to market this Korean built car. So in 86, we uh, opened a couple of dealerships and over time between 1986 and 1995, we ended up with five Hyundai dealerships, two wow. in Florida, two in Atlanta and one in Cleveland, Ohio. And, um, 
if we can put our thinking cap on, those of those those of you that we might remember, in nineteen eighty five in nineteen ninety five, excuse me, um, Hyundai was falling on its face. It had gone from selling three hundred thousand cars down to selling less than a hundred thousand mm. because they had did not bring out a new model. They did not keep up with um, the technology that people were expecting. They didn't understand that Americans wanted a new body styling and they weren't changing their body styling because in Korea you buy the same car over and over with the same body styling. Mm. Yeah. So they had some challenges with their um, engines as well. They mm. had some performance, some maintenance issues. And so the cars weren't selling, period. They weren't selling. So we uh, we had all of our eggs in one basket. We had a couple of Honda stores, but mainly our biggest um, um, stores were the most volume stores we had back then in 1996 was these five Hyundai stores. So basically they were failing in the United States. So uh, it was a very big struggle. We had built brand new dealerships, big mortgages, interest rates were high. We didn't have any car, uh, any sales and it was tough. I'd have to say that was the biggest challenge that I had as being the COO of running the Rick Case Automotive Group. Wow. So it was their 10th anniversary. So we'd, they'd come into the country in 1986. And so their 10th anniversary was 1996. So what we did is we went out to California, went to, and we talked to the Koreans and we said, listen, you got to... You got to do one of three things. You, you know, we had to save Hyundai because if we didn't save Hyundai, we were going to be in big hurt. Yeah. Rick Case is, Rick yeah. Case Automotive. So we went out to Hyundai and we said, you have three choices. You either leave the country because your brand is failing. You change the name of your brand because nobody wants to be seen in a Hyundai. Nobody wants to <laughs> say I bought a Hyundai. <laughs> or you do my 10 year campaign to celebrate your 10th anniversary in the United States. And the 10 year campaign was 10% down. $110 a month payment, 10-year warranty for a 100,000-mile warranty. Wow, that's a big ask. It was the 10-10 campaign. And we said, if you don't put this 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on your car to reestablish the confidence that your car is going to be somebody, something to invest in, that you're going to stand behind it because of all of its mechanical issues, um, we are, um, you know, you're, you're going to fail. So they didn't. They wouldn't do it. They were afraid of how much it was going to cost. They they couldn't get their arms around what would be a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on a car. Back mm -hmm. then, you know, the, the warranties were 24-24. Yeah. So um, we did it ourselves. We got um, 10, We got the South Florida Hyundai dealers together, the five Hyundai dealers in South Florida, and we all met, and Rick said, listen, we're going to buy an insurance policy for this warranty, and we're going to advertise 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on every new Hyundai that you buy. Wow. And we bought, you know, we bought an extended service policy on it, and we started doing it with the five dealers in South Florida. We started, we went from selling 15 cars a month to selling 100 cars a month. Oh, my gosh. And uh, we, we, you know, we, were, we just went back to full speed. Yeah. And it took Hyundai two years to decide that they could understand the metrics, the cost of it, and uh, they, um, they finally did it. So so yeah. we basically wrote Rick Case. Rick Case Automotive wrote the 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty for Hyundai, which really brought Hyundai back on the map. And now it's pretty much common, you know, yeah. a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. You know, the Kia has it. There's a lot of cars that have long warranties. But that was our biggest challenge, which was to save Hyundai from from complete failure here in the United States. Wow. That's an incredible story. I had no idea. That is so cool. I love it. And, and dealing with a culture that was so different than ours and yes. getting them to understand the market. I think that's the key takeaway I heard here when you're going into a market that you're not familiar with and especially the culture, you've got to adapt. You've got to and do something bold. Yeah, they, you know, they don't finance in Korea. That yeah. was another big struggle. People do not finance their cars in Korea. So when they get, got here to the United States in the 80s, we're like, you know, you need a financing arm. The banks, you know, you need a, you need a Hyundai Motor Finance. And they're like, oh, no, everybody pays cash. We said, no, they don't. Not in America. Not they here. don't pay cash. No. And yeah. so uh, we started, uh, Rick actually founded um, with with Hyundai, the Hyundai Motor Finance that they have today. Incredible. That was back in 1980, 1989. 80, wow, that's incredible. What a wonderful story. I really appreciate you sharing that. That is very cool. You know, your life is an incredible one. Uh, the many things you've been through. Are there still some bucket list items for Rita Case that you'd like to accomplish in your life? There's got to be. 
You know, every day I wake up and uh, my goal is to be the best I can possibly be. Mm. Truly, that that's on my bucket list. I want to expand the Boys and Girls Clubs of Broward County. It's um, a, a very worthy cause, helping these young kids in very difficult neighborhoods have yeah. a place to go that's positive after school so we can help them with their homework and we can help them get on to the next grade. That's our goal in the Boys and Girls Clubs is to um, have every child move to the next grade on time. So I want to continue to grow that um, initiative here in Broward County. We have 12,000 kids in Boys and Girls Clubs right now, but it's not enough. There's more need. So I'm um, and I'm very much dedicated to education, helping those that deserve the opportunity for an education get an education. Of course, my, my business goals are always to be number one. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I always tell people my, my uh, you know, people have always asked Rick and I, how come you don't, uh, you know, how come you don't have more dealerships? Why don't you, you know, buy more dealerships? And we said, you know what? There's only one number one. I don't <laughs> yes. need to have 85 dealerships or, you know, 65 right. dealerships. I said, because there's only one number one. Yeah. So I said, our goal has always been the number one volume dealership in America and the number one most awarded dealership for customer satisfaction and, you know, to prove that we can sell in volume and still have a really happy customer base. Well, there's that concept of less is more coming to fruition. Yeah. Exactly. I like that. It's very cool. Well, you know, we wrote a book. We wrote a book that um, that I'll be happy to send anyone that wants to email me. If you email me at Rick Case at my email address, which is Rita Case at rickcase.com. It's a very easy email address. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to send you a copy of our book. And it's our customers, our friends. And that's been our philosophy. If you treat every customer as you would your best friend, you're going to be, you're going to have a business for life and you're going to have a customer for life and you're going to have an associate for life because everybody's going to be happy. So it's a book on entrepreneurship too. It'll give you a lot of lessons about how to, um, how we overcame difficulties throughout our uh, 60 years. We're celebrating 60 years this next year. 2022 is our 60th anniversary of Rick Case Automotive Group. Incredible. Well, I uh, when your husband was on the show, he mentioned that. I'll put links to that on Rita Shona's page so you listeners take advantage of that. Uh, uh, it's a wonderful book, and uh, you'll definitely learn a lot about it. Let's talk about a special vehicle. Now, you mentioned, uh, you know, this. you were the first seller of a Honda back in the day, but is there is there maybe a special vehicle in your life that really stands out? Because we haven't talked about the Boca Raton Concour de Elegance. It's an mm -hmm. incredible event that raises tons of money, helps the Boys and Girls Club that you mentioned in Broward County, and so many more people. But is there a special car in your life that really stands out? There is. Um, that's an easy question for me to answer off the top of my head. When we got married in February um, 1980, Rick gave me as a wedding gift. Now, you got to remember, this is Akron, Ohio. It was snowing. There was snow everywhere. And I was from sunny California. I'd never even driven in snow. And um, he get out in front of the little pavilion where we got married. He had a 1979 308 GT Ferrari Red. What? <laughs> and that was my wedding gift. Oh, he wow. gave me as my wedding gift a Ferrari, and um, I still have the 1979 Ferrari 308 in my in my garage. So that is my. I keep it on a battery tender. I just drive it during the day. I don't take it out at night, but it still, you know, runs great. So that's pretty much, you know, my. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's so. my favorite car. Your Magna PI car. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to be sure that I that I told your audience that um, we did a celebration of Rick's dash. Yes. And that's uh, that's the line between your birth date and your last date in your life. Mm -hmm. And we call that the dash. The dash. Anyway, we celebrated his life and uh, we did an amazing uh, event for him. And what we did was we pared it down to just, uh, you know, just the celebration part. And it's online. If you'd like to hear all about the things I've been talking about. This today and you want to see it in pictures, you want to see my car, you want to see us, our first Hyundai dealership, you, you know, you want to see all the things I've been talking about this morning, please go on to rickcase.com, just simply rickcase.com dot com and um, you will be, come to our uh, web our homepage and at the top of the homepage it says Rick Case Dash and if you click on that link you'll have a video of his celebration of life. Oh my gosh, yeah, it, I've I've enjoyed that. I'll put a link to that on Radio Shunner's page. You got to go check it out. And I was so fortunate to have Rick as a guest on the show a couple years ago, February 2019, I believe. You can find that on the Cars Yeah website if you want to listen to Rick and uh, hear his story. Uh, fabulous, I think. The Dash, very cool. I love it. So, Rita, I'm going to take you on. We already talked about reading, and I want to make sure people get their hands on that book. But I want to take you on what I call the ultimate drive. That means I have the ability for you to pick any vehicle, 
any person you'd be with and any place in the world you'd go on a ride with. What does that ultimate drive look like for you? Oh, my God. Well, listen, I'm going to Formula One next week. I won a trip with Acura. Oh, you're going I won to Coda. Their sales. Well, I won their sales trip, so I'm going to be going to Austin for the Formula One race. Nice. I love racing. Um, I've been to Indianapolis 500 so many times. And when I was a kid and it was on the radio, my dad would play it and we would, I mean, I was just a kid and we would be laying in the, in, in the, in the living room and I'd be saying, dad, what is going on? So if it's the Indianapolis 500 and all I'd hear would be, rawr, rawr. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how much fun is this dad? And, and, uh, I've been to, I love the races. So I'm going next week. So, I mean, I guess if I, if I had my choice, I would like the opportunity to maybe, drive with um you know lars kern who was he's got the fastest nuremberg ring time mm. in his porsche 911 gt2 so yeah. i guess i would rather i guess i would rather if i had my whole choice i'd be with him because he was he safely did the fastest time ever in the nuremberg ring and his uh porsche 911 gt2 Oh, that sounds like fun to me. I'm a huge Porsche fanatic. So uh, yeah, I think that sounds like a wonderful ultimate drive. Rita, you've taken us on the ultimate trip today. You are such a delight. I'm so excited to have you as part of the Cars yeah alumni now. Before I let you go, would you share a success quote or a mantra, some kind of words of advice for us today? I would. And if you get our book, it's uh, each of the chapters in our book is basically our mantra. And, mm. you know, some of the ones that, that, that I, I live by every day and has gotten to me where I am today as a fem successful female car dealer and other successes that I've had that, mm -hmm. you know, most women don't embark on or even challenge themselves on. And I encourage them to is persistence removes resistance. <laughs> so that's one of my mantras every day. I'm I am so persistent that, I mean, if you're persistent, truly, you will remove the resistance for whatever it is that's giving you a no. And that's another one of my mantras. Never take no for an answer. Mm, I and, love it. <laughs> I, I, and another one that I have, which, which, you know, you, you, you cannot be super successful if you don't work hard. It's that simple. It doesn't just plot in. You have to put in hours. You have to educate yourself. You have to be an expert in your field of interest if you expect to be at the top. And so another one of my, uh, one of the things I say to students when I'm speaking to them is I say, start your day early, plan your day, and work your plan. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you will achieve your goals. So, um, Love it. you know, there's other ones in the book, but those are just some of the chapter titles that, that, are, that are my mantras for sure uh, and have worked for me. Fantastic. And uh, again, we want to mention the Boca Tron Concourse coming up. It's yes. 15th annual event coming up February 25th, 26th, yes. 27th of next year. Uh, still a go. Everything's going to happen, you feel? Everything's a go. It's the last weekend of February. And we have Harry, um, Howie Mandel is our entertainer. We always oh choose gosh. a comedian. Wow. Yeah, we've had Jay Leno um, for four times, and he comes every five years. Everything's all set at the Boca Resort, where we've had it in previous years. And it's going to be a great success. The last weekend of February, come to Florida. So if you're in Chicago listening or New York or you go up in the Midwest and it's snowy in that last week of February, get <laughs> yeah. on a plane down here to Fort Lauderdale. You'll have a great time. Absolutely. I'll put a link to that as well. You can check it out at the just the Google Boca Raton Concours and you'll see everything there. An absolutely spectacular event. Uh, if you want to learn more about Rita and her businesses, I'll put a link to rickcase.com. You can find that also, as I said, uh, Boca Raton. I'm also going to put a link to the Horatio Alger Award. I've got a link to that website. You can learn more about that award. Again, Rita, congratulations on an incredible achievement. I mean, your life's been an incredible achievement, but this award has got a hold of a special place for you no doubt oh i can't thank you enough for including me today allowing me mark to have a chance to tell my story and to encourage i hope a lot of women out there that the car business is a lot of fun and i encourage you to have the confidence to jump in there almost any of the women that we have that sell cars are always so successful yeah, Rita, you're the epitome of my mantra, inspiring automotive enthusiasts. You are definitely one. And I want to do a shout out to uh, your lovely assistant, Carol Barber, who helped put you on the show today. And of course, Valerie Zucker at Zucker Lewis PR. 
Uh, both ladies uh, got Rita and I together today. So thank you, ladies, for all your hard work. Rita, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise, sharing your enthusiasm and inspiration. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Okay, keep it, keep it revved up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!